Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to give you guys an example of how you can create motion graphics inside of DaVinci Resolve 17 using the new vector shape nodes. So if you have no idea what a vector shape node is, it probably would be a good idea to check out my previous video on my channel where I explain what each of the nodes do. So if you want to create a blank fusion composition to use with vector shape nodes, then you can go to the effects library on the edit tab, then you want to go to the toolbox down to effects, and then Fusion Composition is going to be listed here right under Adjustment Clip. So a Fusion Composition is basically a blank clip with nothing on it. If you put it as your video one, then you're going to see nothing but a black screen. The only thing that this consists of is a Media Out node initially. So if we go to the Fusion page, you'll see this one singular node. So the Fusion Editor, we use this for creating special effects using sequences of nodes linked together in order to generate the output we desire. So of course, one group of nodes that we can use to make effects is the new vector shape nodes. So if we right click and go to add tool, we're going to find the shape nodes towards the bottom between warp and stereo. So the first node we're going to want to add is going to be an actual shape. So our options are going to be S ellipse, S ingon for polygons with a number of sides between three and 20, S rectangle and S star. Let's give star a shot. So let's add the S star node in. Now, what you got to know is that even if you preview it on the top left or top right window by filling in one of the bubbles there, you're not going to see anything until you have a S render node. So let's go ahead, right click, add tool, go to shape and S render. So we need this in order for our vectors to be visible. So I'm going to connect the S star to our S render and have the S render preview on the top left node. So now we can see the rendered image for our shape. So with our basic shape, we can customize a bunch of settings about it by selecting it and going to the inspector in the top right hand corner. For instance, we may want a star with less points. So a five point star is a pretty common symbol. So we'll go ahead and try that. So the next setting we have is the depth. So that's basically going to determine where the center area is. So if you have a lower depth, then the pointy parts of the star are going to be longer and the center area will be smaller. But if we increase the depth, then that center area is going to come closer to the outside, giving us a chunkier looking star. So it's up to you if you want it to look very slim and thin and pointy, or if you want it to be a little bit bulkier. Well, let's go something like a 0.6 depth for now. And at the bottom, we can change the position of the initial shape. We can control the width height ratio if we don't want it to be a perfect star, but maybe stretched really long vertically. But I, I think I'm going to leave this as the defaults. We can also rotate it here. But I think when it comes to the angle, I don't want to rotate it initially, but rather after we duplicate the star a bunch more times for our motion graphic, we'll set up something to rotate them all at once in an animation. But this isn't the place we're going to do that. So next I mentioned duplicating the star. Basically, to create a bunch more stars and offset their position inside of our render, we can do that with a S duplicate node. So with the S star selected, I'm going to right click on the line here and go to Add Tool and go down to Shape. And we're going to do S duplicate. And you can see by selecting it and then clicking on the line, we actually add it right into our chain automatically. So it saves us an extra step. So with this duplicate, we're going to want a couple more copies to start. And I'm going to offset the position so that we can actually see it. Obviously, at this point, if we take a look at our render, the stars are just way too huge to fit more than one on the screen comfortably. So Back on the S star node, I'm going to lower the width and height of the star. So let's shrink this down to something more like 0.2 for the width and 0.2 for the height. So now we have smaller stars to work with. For now, I'll leave the position centered perfectly. So now what I'm going to want to happen is for stars to rotate around the center point. Now, currently, the axis mode is set to origin relative. So if I rotate, you'll see that each of these stars are rotating around their own individual object origins, which is the center. But if I change the axis mode to origin absolute, then now the new origin for all of the objects becomes the center point. So the further away from the center that each of these stars are, basically set by the X offset, the more this rotation is going to affect them. So you can see how the one that's on the outer edge rotates dramatically more than the one that's closer to the middle, and then the one in the center stays perfectly still. So for such an animation, I'm going to want probably even more stars. And as such, we're going to need to lower the size down once again. Let's half it again. So 0.1 width and 0.1 height. And now our stars are quite small. We can go back to S duplicate 
and maybe our X offset should be smaller as well. If we play around with the rotation, now we can see something coming together. So this could be the work of an interesting animation here. Um, let's actually check out some of the other axis modes as well. So I'm not 100% what's going on with this progressive mode, but it seems like the further it gets to the outside of our image, the more the rotation is. So I guess it's progressively accumulating more rotation for each copy. And let's try absolute as well. Okay, so with absolute, it seems like we have control over that origin point. So if we moved it up here, then the rotation is going to be with reference to that. Okay, interesting. Uh, let's go back to origin absolute for now. So I think what we'll do here is have the animation end with all of these stars lined up. I want them to be spaced a little bit more from each other. So let's put it somewhere like that and maybe shrink the size once again. So let's put it at 0 0.09, 0 0.09 for the height and width. And I'm going to want some on the left side as well. And how we'll achieve that is we'll actually have two S duplicate nodes and then merge them together. But um, for right now, let's get this side correct. And then we'll copy the settings over and just reverse the X offset to create the other side. Let's just say that this is our entire animation. So we want it to end here. I'm at, so we want it to end here at frame 119. So I'm going to keyframe the rotation here. And now we're going to go back to the start. And then we're going to set a negative rotation value to where we want it to start at. So we might just put this at negative 180 degrees, right? So now if we hit play, our Star Wars are going to rotate into position over our 120 frames. And of course, there's many setups you could use for the rotation, whatever you want to go with. But for now, let's copy our S duplicate to a new node. So we need the S star to feed into here. And we also need to break our S render connection because we need to merge these two duplicate nodes together so that they can both feed into the render. The render can only hold uh, one input. So I'm going to right click and go to add tool and we go down to shape and S merge. OK, so now we have the first duplicate coming in here and the second duplicate on top. So we merge them together and then we feed that to the S render. So now all we need to do for the second duplicate node is to put a negative in front of the X offset. So I'll pop in negative here and we have our stars on the left now. So if we go back to frame zero and hit play, we're going to have our animation here. So the same thing's happening on both sides. And over the course of our 120 frame animation, all of the stars line up into position. Maybe we actually want there to be a second or so where the animation has completed and we just have the stars in position. So maybe let's take the uh, keyframe and move it to frame 90. So what I'll do is I'll just go to frame 90 here and I'm going to change the rotation here to zero. So at this point now, there's going to be a new keyframe. You can see it by the little white notch. And we need to do the same for the bottom one. So at frame 90, put zero for the rotation. And now we have a keyframe there for both of them. We can remove the final keyframe now because there's now no animation between frame 90 and 119. But it's not actually really getting in the way right now. So maybe we'll just leave it like that. So let's go to frame zero. We hit play. We have our animation, of course, because it's occurring over less frames. It's sped up a little bit now. So I think that would be pretty OK for our graphic animation. At this point, we could throw in a text title. Uh, somewhere between S render and media out and then merge them together. Because this is a tutorial to demonstrate some of the nodes, uh, we can also throw in a grid. So if we want to duplicate all of this, we can add a grid, an S grid, somewhere between merge and render. So I'm going to select the merge node, right click on the line, go to add tool, go down to shape, and let's do S grid. So as you can see, that creates a lot more duplicates of everything we've got so far. The only thing I want, though, is actually grid cells Y. So I'm going to take the X grid and put that down to one. And the grid cells Y is at three. So as you can see, it creates a grid where we have three copies of the original animation. So if we go to frame zero and hit play, we'll see our animation occur three times uh, from top to bottom on our screen. So that's another cool way that you can duplicate your effects. But I would say if we want to add a title, maybe we only want two grid cells Y and we want to leave the middle space empty. So I'm going to lower the grid cells Y to two. So now we only have two rows of our effect, but now they're too close together in the center area. So we need to increase the Y offset. I'm just going to pop it up here until our uh, stars are positioned in a nice space for their ending. Let's go back to frame zero, hit play, and we can watch it one more time. So pretty neat animation. 
let's add in our text. So as I mentioned, after S render, we're going to need a text node. We're not really worried about creating a 3D scene or anything here. So rather than using a text 3D node, we're just going to stick to our text plus our title isn't 3D at all. So there's really no need for using a text 3D node and rendering that out. So we have our text. Now we need a normal merge node, not an S merge, because after the render, it's just standard images and no longer it is a vector shape. So let's go right click, add tool, composite merge, and we'll just add these two together. So I'll put the S render as the background layer and then the text as the top layer. It may not matter in this case, but uh, we would want the text to show on top of the stars in most cases, I would think. So that's why that should be the foreground. And now we can feed this to media out. So this is our final output. You can see media out is the preview on the right side. We need some text to actually display now. So I would think a cheeky title for this animation could be something like Starstruck. Let's make that a capital S. Of course, our text is too small. So let's increase the size here. And let's change the font to something a little bit more interesting. Impact, sure, why not? All right, so if we go to frame zero and hit play, we have our animation there in the background. And now because white against white is going to be really hard to read, we could change the star color or the text color depending on what we want. So I'm going to select the star and we'll go to style. Let's change the color to something else. So what would be good for stars? I would think something like a light yellow might be interesting. So we change that to yellow. And if we look at our effect, uh, because the foreground is the text, the text always shows in front with this white color. It's still a little tricky to read though. So we may also want something like drop shadow. If we go to shading for the text node, we can go to um, shading elements three, which is black shadow by default. If we enable that, we're going to get some drop shadow on our text. So now if we go to frame zero, hit play, it should be a lot easier to read our text. Because we're doing an animation, we may want to animate the size of the text. Also, the text isn't currently totally centered. We can easily fix the centering, though, by changing the vertical anchor to the middle here. So center that. So if we want to animate the size of our text, let's just keyframe it here at frame 90. And maybe we want to move the position of it a little bit up. Uh, it seems like with this font, the vertical centering isn't exactly perfect. So just moving it up a little seems to help with the uh, gizmos and the preview window there. So let's uh, keyframe the size here. That's the size we want to end with. And we can go to frame zero and we'll have the size increase over time. So we could just start this with a size of basically zero. And now if we hit play, it's going to animate our text over time. So at this point, we can really customize things however we want. If we want to add in more shapes to animate, you can just add more shape nodes. And just when you're done with that section of the animation, just remember to merge them together with your S merge nodes. I think what I might want to do with this title, rather than just having the text get bigger over 90 frames, maybe I also want it to slide in from off screen. So I'll go to the layout tab for the text node. I'm going to keyframe the center point here, and then I'll go to frame zero and we'll just move it off screen. So I could use the gizmos for that if I want. And when we do that, we can see the path that the text is going to follow this green line here over time. If we hit play now, then the text is going to slide in from the left onto the screen. And you know what? I actually hate that. So I'm going to hit Control Z a couple times. Let's just go back to how it was before having the keyframes. So what we could do instead, maybe, is have the text be out of focus initially. And then as it comes onto the screen, it becomes more in focus. So we could do that with a blur node attached after the text one. So I'm going to select the text, right click on the line, go to Add Tool, Blur. And let's see, we could do defocus uh, Gaussian blur, which would be with a standard blur node would be uh, another easy example. Let's show you how the defocus node. So uh, with defocus, the bigger the defocus is, the more the bloom effect is going to layer on top of the text and make it unreadable. So we can start with a lot of bloom and then lower it down to maybe zero or just a very low amount. All right, so we got a keyframe that. So at frame zero, I'm going to have it up here at let's say 10 for starters and keyframe it. Don't forget to click on the keyframe diamond. And now we come up here to frame 90 and let's figure out how much we actually want. 
We could put it at zero, but I don't think that's too interesting because we're talking about stars. Maybe we do want there to be a little bit of the bloom effect still remaining. So we could leave that at two. Can also play around with some of the other settings here. Can also play around with some of the other settings. So if we go halfway here, we can see where the bloom is going to be strong and visible. And we could experiment with just changing the sliders around depending on how much we want the effect to be visible. But you know what? I think it's probably pretty good as it is right now. And now I kind of even want the defocus effect to be with the stars in the background. So I'll also add in one defocus node after the S render. And I think that's going to be it. Uh, obviously, we could go on for days uh, adding all of these nodes into our effect and making things more complicated and interesting. But we've really already covered the main point, which is to use the shape nodes to create some kind of motion graphic animation. So we'll just have a defocus here on the stars in the background. I'm not even gonna change the settings here. We're not gonna animate it, but you know what? Looking at the defocus, it doesn't look like there's any way to change the color of the bloom effect. So we can actually switch to a different node and resolve there's always many ways to achieve the same kind of thing. So after S render, right click, add tool, and we'll go to blur and let's do a soft glow. So the advantage here is that we actually have access to the color scale. So we can just make this kind of a yellow, similar to the base color of the underlying vector shape. So to get yellow, let's decrease the blue and uh, decrease the green a little bit too. Maybe increase the red scale. So now it's kind of a orange glow on the outside. And if we want, we can increase the glow size here lower or raise the gain depending on how much glow we want and then it looks like with the threshold if we increase it we'll get more of the yellow color from the underlying star so i guess i want this threshold a little bit higher there and uh, now we have glowy stars so i think that's going to look better let's go ahead and hit play here maybe the defocus is a little too strong for the text up there we can modify that in a minute but i do think that the glowing stars looks pretty neat so let's go to frame zero We'll lower the defocus here to about half. And at frame 90, uh, we can leave it there at two. So let's go to frame zero, hit play one more time. I, I think I just don't like the fact that the text is pure white. So let's change that color on the text node and the inspector. Let's just find another color for that. I think something like an orange would look a little bit better here. Something that kind of more reflects the general star color. I think I also kind of want some soft glow on the text. So I'm going to copy this node and we're going to put it between the defocus and the merge. So now we can add some glow to our star struck title as well. So I think that's already looking a little bit nicer. The glow plus the defocus is a little much after the 90 frames. So I think at frame 90, we'll just lower the defocus to zero. So let's go to frame zero, hit play one more time and we see our title. Uh, coming back into focus and at frame 90 we should have just the glow and yeah there we go that's definitely a lot more interesting than just plain white text all right so if we look at our edit page we can see how our title looks when it's actually rendered so at this point we could just throw in a background in order to sit behind this title so let's drag it into the timeline there and now we have a background for this little animation maybe we want to darken the background one way we could do that move the fusion composition to layer three. And now we're gonna go to generators and solid color. So just put that right behind the fusion layer. It's gonna be generating color black. And on settings, I'm going to lower the opacity. Basically, the lower the opacity, the more of the background image is gonna show through. Um, alternatively, we could actually lower the opacity of the background image itself, I believe, and composite. But with the generator, we can have any color we want overlaying it. So if we wanted to change this to, I don't know, something like a yellow, we could do that, have a yellow screen basically on top of the background. We'll leave that as black though. I think at 30% opacity, that looks quite okay. So if we move this layer out of here, then we can see the original background. And if we bring it in, then it's gonna darken it for us. And I, I think with it being a little bit darker, we can keep the focus on the animation that we created. So if we let the blue bar fill up in the preview for our animation and hit play, we can basically watch it in the real time it's going to be when we export our video. And there we have it, a uh, pretty simple motion graphic animation that we created using the new vector shape nodes and DaVinci Resolve. I know I was going back and forth a little bit in the video, figuring out what I would actually like, but hopefully this has given you a good idea of some of the ways that you can practically apply the vector shape nodes for creating your 
own motion graphics in DaVinci Resolve 17. It's a feature I'm actually pretty excited about. There seems to be a lot you can do with the tools. But anyway, that's pretty much going to be it for this video. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching to the end, and I will see you guys in my future video content.